So that was the call for uh, Isha Prayer uh, then uh, Isha, welcome back dear viewers. You're watching the Daily Debate with Dr. Amr Atif, uh, holder of PhD in Sustainable Heritage uh, Tourism. And before the break, uh, we were uh, talking about uh, the longest serving pharaoh that, that ruled Egypt. And, uh, King Pepe is yeah. the longest serving pharaoh and he ruled for 94 years. 94? 94. Wow. He ascended the throne at the age of six, uh -huh. and he ruled for 94 years. Amazing. That makes him the longest pharaoh in charge. Yeah, in absolutely. Power. I mean, it's, it's tough to get <laughs> to, to break this record. Yes. I mean, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and from which um, uh, dynasty was he? 1280 BC. Uh huh. Okay. So, so is he a challenger for Merim Bitaah, Ramses II, and Seti for being. Uh, well, he's a challenger for uh. being in charge for a long time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Of course, the record that uh, cannot be beaten, I guess. Yes. Um, Dr. Atif, uh, dear viewers, uh, we are talking about, of course, the uh, Ramses II and Gold, the Pharaoh's exhibition in, in, in Sydney, the one that will be going to, uh, that got half a million visitors and will be going to mm -hmm. Germany in July. Uh, we are talking about this key um, uh, fa uh, uh, booster for uh, th this very important tourism for, for Egypt, the tourism uh, uh, industry for Egypt, the tourism industry. So we'll watch another report, uh, Dr. Okay. Atif, please, dear viewers, and then come back and continue our program. According to the second UNWTO World Tourism Barometer of 2023, 235 million tourists traveled internationally in the first quarter of this year. In Egypt, tourism rebounded in the final quarter of 2022 and continued in the first quarter of 2023. According to Tourism and Antiquities Minister Ahmed Aisa, Egypt received 11.7 million tourists in 2022, up from 8 million in 2021 a 46.2% increase. Tourism then witnessed 43% growth during the first three months of this year compared to the same period in the previous year. Tourism sector revenues increased to $2.7 billion in the first quarter of 2023, up from $500 million in the same period in 2020 and indicators in the Tourism Barometer Report issued by the Information and Decision Support Center show increased optimism about the tourist sector's performance on the part of tourism executives. The National Tourism Strategy, which was launched in November 2022, aims to attract 30 million tourists to Egypt by the year 2028 increasing arrivals by 25 to 30 percent annually. The strategy targets a threefold increase in sea capacity on flights in collaboration with the Ministry of Civil Aviation. It seeks to enhance tourist experience if archaeological sites, museums and other landmarks create convenient products for frequent independent travelers improve the investment environment and encourage investment in room capacity. It also focuses on fast-growing markets that can generate high volumes of travelers and widening the range of tourist activities to increase tourist spending. In March 2023, Egypt introduced new entry visa rules in an attempt to boost tourism. Chinese tourists can now obtain a visa upon arrival, as can Indian tourists who are GCC residents or have a valid entry used visa to the US, UK, Schengen countries, Canada, New Zealand, Japan and Australia. Turkish tourists can obtain a visa upon arrival to Egypt regardless of age as can Algerians and Moroccans traveling in tourist groups. Tourists arriving directly in South Sinai through a tourism agency can also obtain a visa upon arrival, while Iraqi tourists are eligible if they have a valid used entry visa to the US, UK, Schengen countries, 
Canada, New Zealand, Japan or Australia. People under 16 years and over 60 years can obtain an electronic visa through the e-visa platform and a new multi-entry visa, five-year visa to now available for $700. More facilities were launched offering 180 nationalities visas upon arrival as long as they are in possession of a valid used visa from the US, Canada, UK, Schengen area, Japan, Australia or New Zealand and 78 nationalities can obtain the e-visa through the e-visa platform arrival at Egyptian ports. There are in addition special facilities available for additional nationalities flying directly to Sharm el-Sheikh and Taba. Archaeological sites and museums have improved services to enhance the visitor experience and partnerships have been developed with private sector companies to upgrade visitor facilities on sites including visitor paths, signage maps, QR codes, sunshades, benches, self-cleaning toilets, eco-friendly vehicles and facilities for those with for special needs. E-ticketing systems are being implemented at some sites and museums and a web-based platform for obtaining e-tickets is due to be launched. Entry to some archaeological sites including the temples of Edfu, Kumombo, Thela, and Abu Simbel in Aswan can now be paid for using bank cards. An international promotional campaign, Your Expectations Are History, has been launched alongside a new promotional website. The second phase will focus on tactical advertisement, highlighting destinations and product separately. And according to Season, the campaign has already been rolled out across multiple platforms in 18 targeted markets, including Germany, China, the UK, France, Italy, Spain, Poland, Saudi Arabia, Kazakhstan, the US and India. Thanks again to your viewers for staying with us and many thanks to uh, Manel Ibieri and our editor-in-chief Rani Abdesalam for this uh, report. Uh, back here with Dr. Uh, Amr Atif, uh, the touristic expert. Now, Dr. Atif, it's very obvious that the state is keen on providing distinguished and advanced uh, infrastructure and services to increase Egypt's competitiveness in, yes. in the tourism um, uh, sector. Uh, sector, sector. And also uh, uh, is trying to... Uh, develop the skills of a human element to think yes. of. So tell us about these efforts and and uh, and the challenges that are facing us the the state is doing a great job i mean uh, look at the museums that has been built and opened in the last uh, five six years i mean the uh, we have the nemec the national museum of egyptian civilization we have a museum in hergara we have a museum in sharma sheikh we have a museum in ilmenia we have a museum, I mean, almost in every city we have a museum. Yeah. So that's part of the infrastructure that the government is doing and the Ministry of, the, of, the, of Tourism and Antiquities are, are working hard. The human element. The human element is training the uh, people who work in the tourism field. And uh, they are doing lots of training and they are doing lots of, uh, and, 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 and people are studying wide and straight, studying masters and PhDs and so those who are working in the field of tourism uh, are, are now carriers of uh, lots of, uh, I mean, um, diplomas and masters and PhDs. The government is helping and doing training courses all the time because the, those who work in tourism are considered to be representatives to the country, representatives to Egypt, and I think they're doing a good job when it comes to the human element. Uh, especially uh, those who has been working in, you, you will find people who are working in tourism, working in tourism for long times. People who work on the cruise ships, work in hotels, people who work uh, in the museums, and so on and so forth. So I think uh, they're doing a great job with the, with the human element as well. Uh, you mentioned the museums. Uh, 
um, sector. Um, we're going to have the inauguration uh, of GEM, uh, yes. uh, which is working uh, right now, uh, uh, but, but not at its uh, full uh, uh, capacity. And we're waiting for the official inauguration. How will GEM, uh, the Grand Egyptian Museum, which has already been described as uh, the, the biggest cultural city in the world, how will it add uh, to our infrastructure and uh, to yeah. our uh, capabilities? Yeah, the GEM will, will add to our capabilities. And people are waiting for the GEM uh, to open. People come here all the time and ask about the GEM. It's closed, by the way, for the coming 10 days mm. or, or so, or two weeks because they want to work uh, and, and finish the, 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 the furbishing of, of, the, of the museum. Mm. So uh, uh, the people ask about the gym all the time. From, I mean, in the last couple of years or three years, right. whenever we meet mm. a traveler, mm. he says, I mm. want to go to the gym. Is the gym opened? We, mm. we, mm. we, we signed this trip because of the mm. gym. Mm. So people are, are willing mm. uh, to have a look at the gym and to mm. visit the gym. Mm. So museums is a very important element when it comes to the sector of tourism. Uh, and, and we have that. Uh, the NEMIC, the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization, mm. uh, it's, it's a beautiful museum and, and, and has collection from the prehistoric mm. and old middle and new kingdom and mm. Modern, mm. Uh, modern kingdom as well, modern, mm. la, modern Egypt, mm. I mean. So uh, I think museum, I mean, when it comes to museums, we do have museums, and that creates sustainability. Indeed. I mean, the museum, when it's built, it, it helps in creating sustainability because uh, it, it, it uh, helps the area around it. And this happened with the with NEMIC. Um, if, if you can remember, before they built the NEMIC, uh, it was a landfill. Right, we are talking about the Fostat area, of Fostat course. area, of the course. The oldest uh, area in Cairo. Uh, yeah. all the, yes, the oldest area in and Cairo. And now it's back to, to being to uh, be alive. To f yeah, alive again, flourishing. Really. flourishing. Yeah. So I think uh, that's a plus to be added and mentioned. Indeed. Now, Dr. Atif, uh, we are entering the summer season very, yeah. uh, very soon, if we are not already. I mean, it's very hot <laughs> yes. these days anyway. Yes. One of the good things I like about the programs uh, the, with the, I mean, the TV programs, it's, it's all air-conditioned. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, w what about the preparations for this summer season, and uh, uh, how can we benefit from the uh, uh, Egyptian antiquities and coastal areas at the same time uh, um, in such a, 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 a summer? Coastal areas are very important. The beach tourism. 80% of the travelers who travel all over the world are beach tourism. They go to 80%. the beach, 80%, 80%, 80. Mm. Cultural tourism is only 15%. Mm. So all what we're trying to do is try, we're trying to target the 15%, and this is the statistics of the uh, World Tourism Organization, by mm. the way. Mm. So 80%. If people like Luxor, they will go to Luxor and like it, but they won't go to Luxor every year. But if they like the Alamein on a holiday, they, will, they can come again to the Alamein, for instance. So beach tourism... We should focus on beach tourism, and we should care. And, and, and you'll be, uh, I mean, I happen to know a pilot who, uh, who used to live in Egypt, and he retired. And he has seen Al-Amin while he was uh, traveling with his plane uh, around. And he said he wants to come and see Al-Amin. He wants to come back to Egypt to see Al-Amin. I mean, that, that, mm. that shows how impressive it is, mm. you know. So and very soon people will be seeing Ras al Hikma as well. Hikma as well. Mm. So beach tourism mm. is very important. Mm. And uh, across the, the coast from us is Italy and Spain. And, Spain. Mm. and they don't have mm. uh, cultural tourism mm. as much as they have the beach mm. tourism. Greece. And yeah. Greece. We mm. have the beach tourism mm. and we, sh we have the beaches. Mm. The Egyptian beaches mm. uh, are one of a kind, if I can say. Mm. Uh, and uh, we mm. have also corals and and I mean in the Red sure. Sea and so on and so forth. Sure. So beach tourism is very important. If we focused and targeted the percentage of the 80% who travel on beach tourism, I think that would be a win-win situation. And, and, and the fact that we now have museums in places like Hergara and exactly. Sharm el Sheikh yes. and uh, in the North Coast, as you mentioned, I mean... Al-Alamein. Al-Alamein, yeah. So, so how do you like this idea? In fact? I, I just love it and mm. we can connect the Al-Alamein Museum we can connect the Alamein Museum by, because they have the tombs of the Commonwealth 
over there. Mm. So people can come and visit this, the site mm. of Al Alamein from mm. all over the world mm. because lots of people from all over the world mm. participated in the, the WW2, of course. World War II. Mm. So they can come and see Al Alamein mm. and, ex and spend their summer vacation there as mm. well. So that will be uh, hitting two birds with one mm. uh, stone. And remember the fox of the desert. And the fox of the desert, yeah, Raman, and so on and so forth. Yeah. This is a very important site mm. for uh, people who live in Europe mm. and people who live in the US. They mm. always ask about Al Alamein. Mm. And we can do a big ceremony, mm. like a carnival, mm. in Al Alamein mm. uh, for the people who participate, I mean the countries right. who participate. So we can do a summit, for instance, mm. for the, 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 the people who participated. I mean yeah, and very recently there was the Normandy celebrations and the D-Day celebrations. Yes. And, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so I think mm. that's, that's, that's... Al Alamein, of course, is, is a place that maybe shaped history, really. Yes, yes. Yeah, and changed, changed, yeah, the, changed the path. It. Yeah. After the WW2. Yeah, of Nobody course. Nobody expected what happened yeah, and, yeah. and it changed the path. Mm. And it yes. will remain, of course, a, will remain. A, a place that changed history. Yes. So, uh, uh, Dr. Atif, uh, uh, to what extent can, can, can social media uh, help in promoting uh, uh, Egypt uh, um, and, and helping the tourism uh, sector? Sir, the Instagramic tour today is the most important. People like the Instagramic tour. They like to take a picture in the blink of an eye. Mm. They just post a picture on yeah. Instagram or Facebook or so mm. on and so forth. Mm. So uh, the Instagramic tour is important for, uh, I mean, tourism, and social media can help. The good news is they opened the filming, uh, in, uh, I mean, the filming uh, uh, in the sites and the filming industry. Uh, and today, as we speak, I happen to take on a tour a lady, an actress, and her, and her cast uh, on a tour to the Nemec, by the way. Wonderful. And, and they came here filming. Mm. From and which country? From, uh, the, she's from the U.S. Okay. She's from the U.S. Mm. and the cast are from England and from the U.S. Mm. So uh, that was as we speak today. Mm. So uh, that means that filming also is very important. We should, not, we should not worry. We should open our gates and, uh, and not, not worry. And I think that's a step, uh, step a plus and an add-on to tourism. Absolutely. So, so what about producing films for d tourist uh, destinations, producing documentaries, producing... Yeah. In the past, people, I mean, it was not allowed here in Egypt. And people would, would go through lots of people work. Now it's easier. So people now, you'll, f you'll see now, people coming here to film. People used to go to Morocco to film. Mm -hmm. The revenue in, in Morocco was around $30 billion from filming industry in Morocco because they would, they would uh, uh, f in the f film in the Moroccan uh, lands uh, as if it's Egypt and, 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 in the desert. And, and Egypt has like the world's, uh, almost half of the world's treasures. treasures. And, yeah. Yes, yeah. And, and, and our deserts and, mm -hmm. and our sites. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I think mm. uh, if we focus on the filming mm. industry, mm. that will boost because those mm. come with their cast mm. and with their uh, lots of technicians mm. and lots of people and mm. lots of uh, wor working mm. uh, net mm. that comes with mm. the, the actors and the, uh, uh, I mean, to do the filming. Mm. So I think, and imagine we can have another um, film, another movie, another Cleopatra. Mm. That would be also a good advertisement for Egypt. Mm. So we should work in different panels and, mm. and, 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 and paths and, and, mm. and, and not only, so uh, we take care of museums, we do have museums, we have the desert for the filming, we have mm. the beaches for the beach tourism, and mm. we have the culture tourism mm. as well. Mm. If you talk about any of those, Egypt mm. has it all. Yeah, but we need another Omar Sharif as well. I mean, we, we don't have one. <laughs> we don't have one. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get one. God bless his soul. God bless his soul. Yeah. So, uh, the, 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 the reopening of the Avenue of the Sphinx yes. uh, uh, comes as Egypt uh, embarks on various major projects, really. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Atif, what can you tell us about that and, and the major projects that Egypt will be embarking 3, on? 3,700 sphinxes is the total number of the sphinxes in the Avenue of the Sphinxes. 3,700. So, people, it's very impressive. It's very impressive and, and people go to the Luxor Temple and uh, there's a trick we do. We go 
to the Luxor Temple when it's uh, like uh, ki kind of sunset mm. and then they lit mm. it at night it looks spectacular mm. and the people can see the sunset from mm. the uh, Luxor mm. uh, Temple mm. and then they go through the Avenue of the Sphinx mm. uh, and I mean this is an add-on mm. of course uh, connecting mm. Karnak to Luxor Temple mm. and people are get very impressed mm. with the idea that one person again Ramses the second had the avenue of the sphinxes mm. between Karnak and Luxor mm. so uh, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's something spectacular and everybody should have a look at it there's no question <coughs> that the state uh, is uh, uh, endorsing this uh, uh, key sector now you as as an expert in, in this field I want to know from you as we were almost uh, done here um, the challenges that you see or the obstacles that, that y you see that are preventing Egypt from fulfilling its potential because potentially Egypt should be the world's number one destination with given the fact yeah, with, uh, that we have like the, the, half of the world's uh, treasures artifacts. really yeah, and artifacts uh, and also if you have any new ideas to you know, to try and, and to get Egypt where it deserves uh, to be. Well, because uh, despite all of the efforts, I mean, we deserve more. Egypt deserves more. You're, you're right. Uh, Egypt deserves more. And as I told you, sir, we have it all. We have beaches. We have uh, mm. like 30% or 40% of Egypt's, of, of, I mean, of the world mm. uh, uh, mm. um, artifacts. We have the, the location, the, the location, the sun, the weather, yes. the people, the everything. People, yes, yeah. and the cuisine, mm. the Egyptian cuisine. The, uh, as for another, a new idea, since we're talking about the temporary exhibition, I would like to uh, uh, suggest, yeah. if, I can, if I can say yes, that. Yes, please. Uh, I'd like to suggest uh, the monuments that uh, has been taken from Egypt and have been taken uh, in, 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 in different museums of the world, like the Louvre or the British Museum. There are lots of Egyptian artifacts in the, in the Louvre, in the British Museum, in the Metropolitan Museum and so on and so forth. Uh, my suggestion is, okay, now those are ours, no doubt about it. Those artifacts and those statues and, and what have you are ours and had been given to those countries as gifts. If, let's, let's put it this way, as gifts. But now it's about time that Egypt gets a benefit from it. You, they need to... It is ours after all, yeah. It, it, it is yeah. ours after all. Mm. So we need to... Imagine if people go to uh, Tel Amarna, for mm. instance, mm. and uh, to see Akhenaten. So we can, especially the gym, the gym will be opened. Yeah. So uh, we can do cooperation between the gym and the new museum and the other museums like cooperation between the gym and the Metropolitan or the Louvre or uh, uh, the, the, muse the, muse the, or the museums in Germany uh, the, in the museum island and then we can have deal, a deal that Egypt gets a benefit from the artifacts that are displayed in those countries that are ours. That are <laughs> ours. That are, that are ours. So I think this is this will be a good idea, and I think that will help in uh, in supporting tourism in Egypt. Okay. On that note, uh, dear viewers, on behalf of you, we thank very much our dear guests with us here in the studio, Dr. Amr Atif, uh, the touristic expert and the holder of a PhD in sustainable heritage tourism. It's always a great pleasure, sir, to thank have you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you and thank you, dear viewers, for watching tonight's edition of the Daily Debate. Please stay with Night TV International.